My name is Allison Montemayor. I'm a lead product manager for Appian. Um, and joining me is Michael Christen, an executive director at Bank Bontobel. Um, and we're going to be talking to you today about the low-code RPA experience. So Michael's going to start off by telling you about his experience with RPA and Appian. Thank you. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here and tell you a bit about our journey with the Appian RPI solution. So it started first half of last year when we get into touch with Appian about an RPA solution from their side. The situation at that time was the following. So we had already an RPA solution in place, but it was a very light, small installation. One single license running on one workstation, and this workstation was for development and execution of the bots as well. There was not a real test environment, and all the development of the bots were made by an external consultant. At that time, we had already some cases which were in production and some cases which, which stayed just before development. All the cases were mainly related to reportings, reportings on a monthly or quarterly base. And with, let's say around three use cases, we save around 80 days per year of uh, human work. All the cases were mainly using PowerPoint, Excel, one of them a fat client and some web pages. I will go a bit more in detail for the use cases now. First, the use case which uses PowerPoint. So every month, several hundred PowerPoint needs to be opened. These PowerPoints has a customized plugin from an external provider and with some clicks on, on menu items and logins, the data in the PowerPoints are updated. At the end, the PowerPoints needs to be stored in a different folder with different names. Like, it sounds like a really easy use case, but it saves a lot of time, and especially it, it, it's not really a very interesting work for employees to do that 200 times, for example, to open the, the PowerPoint. Second case, the input comes from the business in form of an Excel or some Excel files. The bot is getting data out of these Excel files, structure it in a different way, calculate some new fields, and stores it in another Excel file. And these Excel files are linked into PowerPoints where it displays then some charts out of the data. The biggest one so far is uh, as well starting with input from the business with Excel. So all the bots are doing with Excel some stuff. And out of this Excel, the bot is creating an XML file, or in fact, it would not be the bot, that would be Appian, that's the good combination of it. Uh, the XML file is then to be, needs then to be uploaded in a FAT client, so the bot logs in, uploads the XML file, processes this XML file, and the output, again, is an Excel file. This Excel file is, again, the source for the data which the bot needs put out and then logs into different web pages and goes there to a specific page, stores the data in some fields and, and, and closes the web page again. So that the, was the situation when we started last year. And with this, with this part, I get the order to make the solution with this single licensed uh, installation to make it more scalable. It means several robots should be run at the same time which uh, ended then in a, some kind of an architecture with an orchestrator component in it. We should reduce the cash out costs, means we should be able to develop everything in-house with, uh, with the existing resources we had already. Then we should reduce the risk. In fact, we should have an architecture with test, acceptance, and production environment that every bot first could be really tested in a lower environment. And we should for, take over the whole responsibility for this installation, whatever it would be at the end. With this order, we went into a POC with Appian to find out if the functionality of the existing bots could be migrated to the Appian RPA solution. That was the first thing which should be proved. After successful doing that, some other points were then really saying that we can go forward with the, with the Appian RPA solution. 
So that means one, one goal was that we already had an Appian team in-house, which was quite familiar with the Appian process platform, and the time to bring them or to train them on the, on the, on the robot part was much lesser than on a, on a new software product. Then it's quite easy to connect everything from the <laughs> robot side to, to uh, Appian. You can also reuse everything from Appian, uh, constants, expressions, web APIs all over. We had an attractive license package from Appian and at the end, it's, not, it's le last but not least, because our Appian installation is an on-premise installation, that means we, we needed to find a way to have a kind of a hybrid architecture at the end because the RPA solution is only running in the, in the cloud. And after also, you could agree on that, the, the way was given to go forward with the Appian solution. So that was so far the, the way from last year till exactly now. And with this, I give over to Alison. Great, thanks Michael. Okay, so you know, so given that Bontobel was really excited to be able to use their Appian resources, their existing Appian team to be able to, you know, leverage that for, for their RPA implementations, you know, let's talk about how Appian actually makes it easy for your developers to be able to build these kinds of solutions. So Appian RPA includes tools that make it fast and easy to build robust automations. From being able to record user interactions in order to build your bots, to defining complex uh, logic and flows using simple design tools, to being able to efficiently debug and troubleshoot issues when they arise. Appian provides tools at every step of the design process to make it to, so that your Appian developers can deliver value fast. With Appian RPA, you can jumpstart your design by simply recording interactions just as your users would perform them. So as you click or type or navigate through different pages in your applications, Appian, the task recorder, can automatically uh, detect all of those interactions and generate the corresponding actions for you, making it really easy to build that process. You know, we can also make it so that you can extract data from web pages really easily as well. And it's also smart enough to detect when you have extraneous actions um, that you, through your recording and be able to remove those from the flow for you in order to reduce noise and actually streamline your overall process flow. Okay, and it's really easy with RPA because it can be so fragile if the underlying structure of your application changes to choose robust selectors for identifying elements on the screen. So with the task recorder, we can identify all the available selectors and choose the one that's going to be the most stable by default. But if that doesn't work for your use case, it's really easy to be able to choose a different type of selector or even change the value of the selector to dynamically uh, get different types of elements on the screen. And as you change those selector values, we show you a preview of any and all elements that match that selector, giving you that fast feedback that you need in order to make good design decisions. The task recorder also lets you configure any of the other important attributes um, directly in line, uh, which reduces the amount of stuff that you have to do after the recording is complete. So for example, if you're extracting data from a web page, um, it's easy to be able to say, this is, the kind of, this is the type of attribute that I want to extract from the page, and this is where I want to actually store that value into. And once you're done with your recording, it's really easy to modify your process as needed from that point. So in the new designer interface, you can add new actions uh, from the palette just by dragging them in, or rearrange existing things that you've just recorded, you know, move them around using drag and drop as well. It's also really easy to view and modify all the different configurations for your different actions, you know, because we display all of it in line as opposed to you know, popping open a separate dialog. And more than just making it easy to design using drag and drop, we've also introduced new actions that take complex design patterns and make them much easier to implement. So if you need to uh, process items in a list, you can use our new looping action, which all you have to do is specify the type of the loop that you want, you know, for each or while or repeat, and then define a simple expression that, that acts as the condition that you're iterating over. 
Um, we also provide the contextual variables to you to allow you to give you easy access to the data for the particular item, you know, the index, the total count, all those kinds of things to make the logic inside the loop easy as well. Now, as your applications grow and you have more and more robotic processes that are running, um, being able to have modular design patterns is really important for maintenance, right? So robotic sub-processes make it really easy to centralize logic and be able to reuse it through all kinds of different parts of your application. Um, you know, it's really just as simple as defining the inputs and the outputs in all the different locations that are relevant. And of course, the nature of RPA is such that even the best designs you know, will, will run into issues eventually. It's just how RPA is. So it needs to be easy to diagnose issues when they arise. So with our debugging tools, we allow you to really quickly be able to get to the root cause of any issues that are happening by giving you tools like setting breakpoints, being able to disable actions, choosing where you start your execution from, all those kinds of things. And that makes it efficient to be able to isolate those issues and then be able to fix them. Okay, so let's check out all of these things together, um, you know, see them in action, right? So in this demo, we're going to build and test a robotic process from scratch um, in just under five minutes. So our robotic process that we're going to build will log into a web application um, that tracks shipments. We're going to extract all the shipment IDs um, from, a, from a, all the different pages of a paging grid. <clears throat> Okay, so we'll start by opening up the task recorder from the designer interface. So all you have to do is select the resource and the URL that you wanna start from, and, and then you can go from there. So once the task recorder is launched and the browser is there, I can go ahead and start interacting with it just as my users would. So I can click on the username field, type in my username. It's actually automatically detecting the uh, element that I'm interacting with and the type of interaction, so that it, that's already taken care of. Next, I can go and start extracting data from the page. So here, I'm going to get the total number of shipments, so I know how many I'm going to expect to get across all the pages. And I can just store that into a variable. Now let's go and get the shipment IDs um, from the ID column. Now I could extract each individual values from each row, or I can go and get the whole column at once. So I'm going to change the selector from ID to XPath, and I'm going to remove that row index so that I can get them across all the rows all in one go. And I can see that preview there shows me how many elements I'm going to get. I can select what data I want to extract and where I want to store that data into. Next, I'll click the Next Page button, and then now I'm done. So I can close out my browser, and I can save my recording so I can go back and do the final modifications in the Robotic Task Designer. Okay, so now I can see all those actions I just recorded. They're all grouped together here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by doing a little reorganization. So I'm gonna add that looping action from the palette um, so that I can get those items for each page. And I'm gonna move those relevant actions into that loop. We'll come back and configure that in a second. So next I'll take the close browser action, move it down to the setup so that I can make sure that, or sorry, down to the cleanup so I can make sure it always runs even if you know, there's a failure. And I remove the open browser and log in up to cleanup. Now I just need to go in and uh, configure where those credential values are coming from. They're going to come from a secure credential store um, as opposed to the values I typed in the task recorder. Okay, now I'll go down to my loop. I'm going to uh, make it so that it's a while loop, right? I'm going to keep going until there are no more pages of the grid. Um, and so here I can just define uh, the logic for how long it should continue. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare the length of the, the IDs that I've extracted to the, uh, the total number that I am, I'm expecting. All right. And then I'll just uh, go ahead and test now that I've made all those changes. So when I test, I'm going to turn on the debugging mode so that I have access to all those debugging tools to make, help me find any issues quickly. So it's going to go ahead and start running here. I'll go ahead and see it run through my login steps. And then it's going to automatically pause at the beginning of the main section. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add a breakpoint here at the next page one because I'm, I'm suspecting that that's going to give me a, a hard time. So when I click resume, it's going to keep going until it gets there and it's going to pause. So I can come in here, I can see that that next page link is there. Um, so I'll, I'll go resume here. 
And on the second iteration, it'll pause there again and give me another chance to check and see what's going on. So now when I come over, I can see that next page link isn't there. So I'm expecting this is gonna fail here. So I can come over and I'm gonna disable this action because my loop should be over anyways, right? So let me just make sure everything else is working correctly. I'll resume. And I would have expected my process to end. But actually I can see here that that loop is continuing. It's basically in an infinite loop. So that means there's something wrong with my logic. I can also go and I can look at those claim or those, those uh, IDs that I'm extracting and be able to see that that's not actually what I would expect there. It looks like it's overriding every page of data. So I'll come here and I'll start making those changes. I'll make it so that it doesn't fail when that next page link is, is not present. And I'll make it so that when it saves into those, that variable, it appends the values instead of overriding them. So now I'll go through and I'll, I'll test out my changes again um, so I can see if, if those changes worked. And I'm pretty confident that those, that those changes work, so I'm not gonna set any breakpoints this time so that it, it goes through a little bit more quickly. But we'll, we'll look and see if, if my assumption is right. Okay, so we see it log in. We'll go ahead and click resume. And now I would expect it to run through both iterations of that loop and then be able to, to finish up since I don't have any breakpoints. Okay, so here I can see it finished. It didn't fail on that next page action. I can see that the claim IDs are the full list of, of, of what I was expecting to get. And I saw that it didn't actually have that um, infinite loop problem from before. So, so I can see it was you know, really easy for me to test out, find kind of like the root cause of some of my problems, and then be able to fix those issues really quickly. So yeah, so there you go. In just a, a few minutes, we were able to kind of start from scratch, get a recording out, and build all that stuff together. All right, so what did we see, right? We saw that you know, you can record interactions just as your users would do them to really help streamline, you know, that design process for these, um, for these robotic processes. Then we saw how it was easy to add, you know, even complex logic for things like for looping and stuff like that um, in the new design experience, and how we can use those debugging tools to quickly identify the root causes of problems um, when an issue arises in our process. So that, those are the kind of tools that Appian provides to help make it easy um, and fast to build these robust automations. Okay, so now I'm gonna hand it back to Michael so that he can tell you a little bit more about what's next for Vontobel and how they you know, plan to use some of these features in the future. Okay. Yes, what's next? It's a good question and it's uh, also an, an, uh, an agile answer because uh, Within the last few months, we already received a use case we had no, never on the roadmap before. Um, and it's fully different from what we did so far also with the Appian RPA solution. What we did till now is we developed unattended robots. It means they work, they run on a different workstation with specific users and at a specific time. And now we have the use case that we get some, some people coming with uh, a third RPA solution, but they were able to do the development on their personal workstation where they also do their daily work. It means the citizen developer approach has come to our desk so far. Uh, for that case, it's key what uh, Alison showed and presented before, that mostly can be done by drag and drop and not with, also really with a low code approach. So that's the key that it, can work from a technical point of view. Uh, that's what we will do the in the next few months to provide a, a solution with the RPA solution from Appian for attended robots. The governance part is for sure a different one, but that doesn't depend on the software which is uh, used for it. Then we have to migrate the rest of the robots from the existing RPA solution we already have since last year. Um, we have to migrate these attended scripts or a minimum assist the business to migrate these uh, scripts from the existing robots to the new one. And for sure we want to integrate bots in our bigger processes. And that in parallel we scan our 
company to find out where is the, the most need or where, where can we assist with RPA to make the work more efficient. That's what will go, come now in the next few months or years, so it will be interesting anyway. And from my side, thank you for listening and I give back to Alison. Thanks. Okay, so hopefully you're really excited to, you know, check out and see, uh, see how you can uh, really automate your business processes from end to end um, using RPA, right? So what we've, got, uh, what we've got is an automation kickstart program. What we can do with this is uh, actually work with you from start to finish on your automation journey, right? Really helping you to look at your use cases, um, identify if they're gonna be a good fit, um, if you're going to get, you know, kind of the ROI that you're expecting, um, and help you provide, help provide you with um, some guidance on the best ways to implement those kinds of things, what tools are going to be good for you, and that kind of stuff. So if that's something that you're interested in, if you've got some use cases uh, that you'd be interested in exploring with us, we would love to hear from you. You can scan this here um, to actually sign up and get in contact with us about the Kickstarter program. Okay, and I mean, and if you don't have anything that's necessarily like, you know, a burning use case yet, but you still want to get started and try it out a little bit, um, you know, you can actually always try Appian for free with Appian Community Edition, right? So there's a bunch of online training courses to kind of help walk you through, you know, different parts of the product, including RPA, um, and then, you know, really get a good sense of how to use it, how it fits into the overall platform. And of course, you know, if, if you're interested in, you know, getting your Appian cert, Appian Developer Certification, that's also something that you can kind of pursue through the Appian Community Edition and our online training. Okay, so that's all for our presentation. Thank you guys so much for attending. Um, we do have time for some questions, if there are any. Yes, we've got one right here in the front. Got a mic coming to you. Thank you. Um, so I am an automation product manager for my company. Um, we use app. Okay, let's just close up. Okay, uh, we got to build the RPA for that. <laughs> so uh, we use. Uh, I mean, I, I'm a heavy user of Appian, um, and we have a quite a lot of integration with automation anywhere at this point. Okay. So I wanted to under one thing I took from this session is um, <clears throat> the value proposition was we can be all in one environment having an RPA. Any other advantage you have, because I have a 20 plus integrations with Appian and Automation Anywhere, if I have to move all that, uh, what would be? And the second question, I, I will ask two questions so you could. Uh, do you have any concept of RPA bot store? Um, with Automation Anywhere, they are launching this uh, bot store, which is, uh, seems like it's a, um, redundant like bots that we could use from that they have developed. Uh, we can just uh, take it and drop it somewhere. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so let's, so let's go back to the first question, which was basically, you know, what are the kind of benefits that you get from, you know, like switching over to using Appian RPA? So yeah, so first to definitely clarify, right, you know, Appian's an open platform, right? If you've got existing bots, you know, in other types of, you know, vendors and things like that, we absolutely work with those, right? Those integrations, those aren't going anywhere, right? You know, you, you can still feel confident in those kinds of things. Um, the good part about, you know, like having RPA in Appian um, and being able to leverage that, right, is that that kind of full end-to-end -end integration, right? Because the big thing that we want you to do is make sure that you're using the right automation tools for your use case, right? Um, we tend to find that when, when people do like RPA kind of in isolation, right, that you kind of think it's a hammer and nail situation, right? Like when you've got RPA, everything looks like it should be a bot. But that's not necessarily the case. Um, and, you know, really making sure that you're using the right tools for the job, Appian having RPA included already, you know, as part of the platform, that makes it easy for you to kind of really choose the right tools and seamlessly go back and forth between them. Um, but that said, you know, you can definitely still use, you know, other types of vendors. Um, this just makes it really easy to leverage all parts of the platform together at once, right? So even things like, um, you know, if you notice the 
the, when I define the logic for the loop, right, you can use an expression to do that, right? It's easy to reuse business logic, you know, reuse parts of, parts of your application, you know, in both places. So those are going to be a lot of the kind of benefits that you get there, um, as well as just the persona that's, that's doing it, right? Your app again developers that, you know, they can, they can also do this here. You don't have, they don't have to have a separate set of knowledge of how to use some other, you know, um, some other vendor about how to do the RPA side different from Appian. It's, it's all kind of one seamless experience. So those are a lot of the kind of benefits that you get there. Um, the second question about like a bot store, right? So of course, you know, on um, Appian Community, right, we've got the app market, um, and the app market has all kinds of different things that you can use, um, you know, across all of the platform, right? There's lots of different types of, um, you know, plugins and applications and things like that, um, and there definitely is the same kind of stuff for RPA, right? There's some already already pre-built examples. There are some extensions to, you know, the capabilities that we provide out of the box. Um, so yeah. We Definitely recommend you know checking out the app market. Um, that's you know, and that's always evolving too. There's always new stuff kind of you know coming online there from partners or or um, you know people just using different types of stuff as well.